That's Chevy. He had major trauma, so to be around people was so stressful to him. Yeah. That he would go very catatonic and he yeah. would just go within himself and, and you know, just yeah. go away. So, he's so it's much good to see such a transformation. Yes, and see him at, at peace. Day. And, and, you it's know. just incredible. Yes, he's happier with us, you know, with humans. Last time he was different. Yeah. He was more stressful with us. And now, look, after, yeah, you're like... Right. There's a difference even now. Yes. The Chevy, yes. And um, his story is very exciting. And can't wait for you to hear it. So he's blowing up Facebook now. Have you guys been oh, following absolutely. and seeing everybody? Uh -huh. So I thought, really, videos, it changed my parents, you know. It was very profound even before I had horses. Stuck him in that stall for four years. Mm -hmm. That was his experience with humans. Mm. So his name is Delano, like Dylan, with an O on the end. And he comes from Germany. When he was uh, five years old, he became unrideable. Very, very well-bred horse. He became a, a licensed stallion in Germany, and they're worth a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So he was valued at over 800,000 euros. I'm sorry, I keep being 800,000 euros, which at that time was a million dollars. But he was so difficult to handle, impossible to ride, was bucking everybody off slamming them into walls like when you buck, that um, everybody didn't want to ride him. There were 25 professionals at this stallion bar. Oh my god, what a stunning animal. Which is the one that's in charge? The, the light one? No. It's the one. Oh my god, his energy is everywhere. <laughs> the one with the blue jacket, the blue uh, blanket with the red trim? Yes. Yeah. Look at this. Oh my no, god. Oh my. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Power, power. What you're seeing now is a lot of adrenaline, right? And there's no fences. They just be galloping wherever. And one of the biggest problems for horses in the human world is because they're trapped. If they're still deep inside themselves, a trap is very difficult for them emotionally. So um, all of this excitement is was around dominance games, right? They're wanting to like push each other around, see who's the strongest, the fastest, the smartest. When the head is up like this, and these muscles are strong, you can bet they are on adrenaline. And this is a very dangerous time to be close to a horse. So that's why we can say like, you can be on adrenaline over there, right? <laughs> I don't need him on adrenaline and on top of me. 
So we just keep the horses away. And if, if I had him on a line, a, the longer the line, the better. But I would say, you stay over there. And I would use my skills, you know, wiggling the rope and whatever it is to keep him out of my space until he calmed down. So if a horse comes at you with that kind of energy and you go, whoa, <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> you got to match that energy or they don't even know you're in the room. And it's not about being aggressive, it's about going, you cannot come through me. You need to protect this. You don't go at the horse, right? Because when you go at the horse, it's um, threatening for them. That's what predators do. Predators go at the horse. So anytime a horse is a little skeptical, worried, whatever, you back off. And that will create draw. But when they're pushing on you, you need to push on them and go get out of my space and stay out of there, but not attack him. So he's still too high to invite him into my space. So I'm not going to allow him to come to me. And this is where we've got to be careful because, you know, especially a horse that's been through a lot, you want to go, oh, 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 oh. But when they're foolish like that, and they're up on adrenaline, you do not want them near you. Even like, oh, Whoa, 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 coming down. It's like, nope. He's going to come in on my terms, and number one is safe. Safe and calm. Right? So that's what I'm going to do with him. More like a left brain horse. To be a little bit more bossy, friendly bossy, is what you need to be with a left brain horse. Because otherwise, they just take advantage of you. So now this looks better, right? So I'm going to walk backwards and invite him in. And he can still have this skepticism about people. So if something goes wrong, he's first going to go, was that a threat? Okay. Like he's not like, oh, it's just a stupid human. You know, he still goes, mm, there can still be some trust issues there. Oh, okay. But this is the kind of state that we want horses in. We want them blinking, their heads at least level with the withers, if not a little bit lower, yeah, uh, like licking their lips. If they're blinking, that's when you know they're thinking. Right. When their eyes are wide and staring, they're not thinking. That's not a safe time to be around a horse. And then you want their oh. muscles to be soft, not <gasps> tight and <gasps> ready to blow at any minute. Okay. Right? And that's how you can start to read horses right, and be safe around them. Because people get hurt with horses when they can't read them. They don't understand if the horse right now is scared, or he's dominant, or he's on adrenaline. You know, when they're on adrenaline, you can't reason with them, right? They've got to be, see him licking his lips now? Yeah, that's so different. Yeah, they've got to be more in, in this kind of state. Exactly. Yeah. And then the overall goal um, is partnership. It's like, you know, I want the horse to want to be with me. And so horses have to learn that with humans. And it, and it takes more than just love. It takes like a respect for you as their, <laughs> as their leader, right? Because horses are natural followers and they're looking for natural leaders, right? And so how do we offer this horse leadership? So if I was to ask you, you know, what makes a good leader, we'd probably have a hundred different things that we could say. But I'm gonna give you one easy way to think of it. The leader is the one with the plan. You need to have a plan and then you can lead and the horse can follow your plan. So I'm just going to give you an example of this. So my plan is to walk around this arena with him next to me. And when he, okay, you're ready to do jumping jacks and whatever if they come here? It's like you stay out of my space. Yep. Yep. Good. So what I want Delano to realize, like he started to go, but then he stayed kind of connected to me, right? So I want him going, I like being around your energy. Those guys are crazy, right? So I, horses are attracted to energy. And so when you have a calm, focused energy, horses are more likely to want to be around that. Because even though this was um, a kind of playful dominance, that adrenaline is still very scary for horses because the only time they get on adrenaline is when they're scared or they're fighting. 
And so when adrenaline comes up, they'll go in one of those places, but it's a very volatile situation. So we need to teach horses to keep their adrenaline down when they're around us. And that's what we do, you know, that's what we teach you in the program. Okay, so my, um, my focus now, and I'm going to do this at Liberty because it's more interesting, but obviously it starts uh, with halter and, and lead, right? And I'll show you that. We'll do that with your horses after this. So now I'm going to walk away, and I want him to come with me. And he didn't come with me, so I'm going to head towards his tail and put a little pressure on his tail until he starts thinking about coming to me. So while he's leaving me, I'm going to follow him. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry the phone rang for you, but... It, I'm going to move away and take the pressure off. Great. Well, it's nice talking. So horses don't like pressure. They like release of pressure. So when I walk towards him, that's putting on pressure. When I walk away from him, it's taking away pressure. And everything you do with horses is on that level in one way or another. Whether you're using your hands to put physical pressure on them, or your leg, or a bit, or a stick, whatever, it's still pressure and release. So I just did that with him. I put pressure on him by walking towards him, which is not a lot, right? but it's enough for a horse to go, that's pressure. And as soon as he looked at me or took a step towards me, I moved away and that took pressure off. And horses are strangely drawn to that, right? They go, I don't know why, but I want to follow you. Okay, <laughs> that's basically <laughs> So every time he looks away from me, I'm going to go to zone five, his tail. So zone one is the nose, zone two is the neck, zone three is the um, front of the horse, including the front legs, the chest and, and the ribs. Zone four is the hindquarters and hind legs, and zone five is the tail. And so we think about it in that way so you can be more strategic and cognitive back. So now, what a lot of people do when they go to lead horses, is that they, they'll grab him here, right? And then just like drag him along. But I'm gonna treat this more like a safety line and pretend I don't have it. So the less I use my rope, the better, okay? <coughs> so a great way to lead a horse is not to walk away from it, first of all, but to actually push it hmm. out of your way. Okay. I see how he didn't yield very easily? The dominant horse won't yield. <laughs> Just by moving them out of the way, they're like, hmm. they'll make a decision about you as a leader, right? Versus, can you keep me? <laughs> don't do well with that. Right? Right? Your horses need very black and white leadership. And they need you to be calm. Like that loving energy is really powerful. But if it's without language and leadership, it's dangerous. Right? You need to have both. And if he's not up next to my shoulder, I'll say, you should be at my shoulder. You need to stay by my shoulder. If you're not by my shoulder, then I will bite you. But I'll do it in a playful way. Right? So horses did this from the day they were born. Right? This is like my fall. Your mama trots, baby trots. Mama stops, baby stops. Right? So that's basically what we're looking for is that the horse part of us. The same thing when riding. If I'm walking, you're walking. If I'm trotting, you're trotting. If I'm cantering, you're cantering. But what a lot of people when they do when they get on horses is they just kick to go and pull stop. They don't do anything in their body. They don't offer any kind of leadership. They just tell the horse what to do. But I'd be sitting on a horse and i go, I'm going to walk. And the horse goes with me. That's the concept. It's more natural that way. He's a left brain horse, but he is psychologically damaged by the way he was trained and so what we've had to do is build his confidence as a learner right he's a confident horse by himself as you can see he'll go bully anybody but as soon as he's in the hands of a human he's got all this baggage because he's been forced to do things and he's a very smart horse and the smarter they are the, the more of a thinker they are like left brain horses the less tolerant they are of, of that kind of treatment so through the seven games, we teach horses, don't fear me, don't fear my tools. Trust me, trust my toys. This is my long skinny orange arm with a 
flimsy little fingernail on the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a part of me. So when horses fear this, it's usually that they are not completely trusting of the human yet. Porcupine game number two, which is does my horse understand how to yield, follow, steady pressure in every part of his body? So horses naturally are designed to resist pressure, fight pressure, get out of a trap, whether it's a, the claws of a predator or you know something like this. Horses are plains animals. They don't live in forests. Right? They need because their primary escape is run. So we have to teach horses not to fight pressure, but to follow pressure, like yield to it, understand what it is I'm asking them to do with my fingers. And so to this extent, I don't force the horse to do it, I teach him. Because in the beginning, horses don't know that. You put your hand on them and they're like, what? And then what humans tend to do is, shove on them, right? Instead of going, no, let me show you. I'm going to escalate the pressure slowly, like this is soft. Now I'm going to get stronger, 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 till he moves and finds his own release from the pressure. So that we're teaching the horse that he can move towards comfort. That is dominance when they do that. Right? This is fear. That is fear. Right? But when they push their nose at you, Ring their neck like that, it's dominant. And the way to fix that is not to smack them like most people do, because then the horse just goes game on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? And then it's like, you know, can I get in and bite you and get out? Yeah. And swing. Right? So you just back them up. Backing cures biting. Backing cures a lot of those dominant behaviors. And of course, it's naturally in the seven games. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So should we go thing. look at the great Chevy? Yeah. 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 Okay, stop, 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 stop. When he started doing this, yeah. he's telling you, I'm not sure. So in that moment, you need to back off, right? So you don't go, oh, you're okay, because they're not. You just put your hand and let him smell your hand. Okay, so now see, he walked away, so now I want you to walk to his tail. Tail, as soon as he looks at you, back up. Yeah, good. Now don't lose connection with him. So when you back away, back off, Keep an eye on him out the corner of your eye. And if he's standing still, now you head towards his tail. Like in an arc. Now, go wider. Keep walking towards his tail, but go wider. So what she's doing now is retreating. Now when he stops, you close in softly. Now you go out. Isn't that simple? When he stopped, you walk towards his tail. And you go to the tail, because then they never feel trapped. If you go to their face, they feel trapped. You go to the tail and they start going, what are you doing back there? And it gets their curiosity. And she's doing what I'm doing. What I do, right? <laughs> Keep walking. Now, let's talk about leadership here. So as you're walking, you're kind of thinking about him and you're all gushy inside, okay? So I want you to walk towards his tail. So you want to keep track of him. Yeah, and walk away, good. Now, you're gonna keep track of him but I want you to have a goal in mind. Like I'm walking around this corral with him at my shoulder. That's my goal. So whenever it's not working, can you see the difference in her now? Yes, mm -hmm. and in right? him. Yes. So now he feels your leadership like you're going somewhere. When you were thinking more about him, it was actually pressure on him. Interesting, huh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where I talk about in leadership, you want to have a plan. I'm going to do this. Okay, stop right there. And now I want you to softly approach him with your hand out. And if he goes to leave, you back up a step. Lovely, back up, back up. Yeah, so good. Yeah, now do nothing. Excellent, just ignore him, turn away. So now, when you turn away and put your focus here, the horse goes, oh. But if you turn away like this, <laughs> and the horse goes, what That's the creepy. heck's going on? <laughs> so we need to be a little bit more natural in ourselves. So when we take pressure off, we just go, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? Or, well, you know, so take your focus off him, right? And then the horse really feels the difference. That was really good. I okay. felt the difference. Yeah. Instantly. You look different. His draw was, yep.
You're and he was right there. Yeah. He was right there. Yeah. And your body language changed. And yeah. Before that, he was like, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And that's where he needs your certainty, right? Okay. You need to go, this is what we're doing. And then if he has a little trouble, you can fix it as you go. But if you're just going, oh, I'm trying to be careful, he's going, be careful doing what? Now it feels weird, yeah. right? So have a plan. I'm going to do this. Even if you only think of one thing from one second to the next, one moment, minute to the next, and go, and then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do that. You don't have to have your whole life planned, right? Okay. So see if you can uh, if you'll sniff your fingers again. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. And now I want you to softly walk in and see if you can rub him on his withers. Okay. And any time he looks away, you're going to just hesitate for a moment. That's it. Rub him on the withers. Good. Rub him. Like rub his soul, rubbing, 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 rubbing. If you're too tentative, the horse is going to be skittish. You have to have just the right amount to go, hey, it's all good, buddy. Yeah, good, good, really good. And now I want you to walk away, and the goal is that he follows you. Yeah, look where you're going. Think about where you're going. Yeah. Super. Nice. Super. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. All right, go and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. See if you can put your hand out, off him. Beautiful. And now go in. Be really casual. Yes. That's it. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, 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 rub. Rub, rub, rub. Stay there, stay there, stay there. No, stay there, stand still, stand still. Oh, stand still. Yeah, don't follow him. <laughs> don't follow him. No, see, he can come back to you then. Good. So he got alarmed by the camera. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Lots of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> so now go up and do the same thing again. If he leaves, you just wait. <coughs> Good, be really casual, like we've done this a hundred times. Does he have any itchy spots you know of? Oh, yeah. All right, go get him. So this is true friendly game, is trust me, love being touched by me, nothing feels threatening. And when horses show you their itchy spots, they're, they're really getting over their vulnerability with you. Horses that are really scared, they could be itchy like crazy and yeah. never show you. And so people will sometimes say, oh my goodness, a year later my horse suddenly started showing me its itchy spots. It's and you know by that reset. time the horse has let down its guard. Okay, are you able to rub him all over or is he worried? Okay, so just show me that. And do it like you're exploring him, right? So that you're really emotionally connected when you do it. Not just like, oh, I can rub the horse. Like sometimes you'll see people do demos with wild horses or whatever, and they're very matter of fact and unfeeling and they just like, you know, desensitize them. You know, there's these things like Road to the Horse and they'll do amazing things where they desensitize horses and they can have chainsaws stand on their back you know, crack whips and do all kinds of things, but then when they want the horse to do something, they've got nothing, because they've just taught the horse to be numb. Oh. And so we don't want a numb horse, we want a, a trusting horse. Lovely. Now you're going to come over here and get your halter and rub him with your halter. And now, he didn't follow you, so what you're going to do is like, go in a little bit of an arc towards his tail. But the main thing is you don't walk straight to them, you walk in a little bit of an arc. And then if he steps towards you, I want you to face him and step backwards. Go, 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 don't sneak. Now step backwards, yes, and invite him. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. That's awesome. Let him smell the, the rope. Hold it out to him and allow him to smell it. He doesn't want to touch that, so he's like, oh, I'm not so sure. Okay, now take it away. Yeah, and now put it back. Now you see him breathe. Take it away, good. Even though he was distracted by something, you still go, oh, there's a change, mm -hmm. I'll take it away. He was very afraid of rope. Oh my God, I can imagine. So in the friendly game, there's rhythm. We'll take it away and we'll come back. And then they're like, oh, thank goodness, the thing went away. Oh, it's back. Oh, it's, it's back. What is this thing? Okay. <laughs> when you look at the level of his withers and where his head is, that tells you about their stress level, right? Their anxiety. So you can see his head's getting lower, right? So he's starting to tell you that he's feeling less threatened. 
and his adrenaline's coming down. Now he's kind of staring in his eyes, it's not really blinking. There's a little blink. So those are the things you want to look at and go, hmm. Huh. I think he looks like he's about to go to sleep. Yeah, so now what's happening is he's coming off the adrenaline and his body, his body is getting flooded with endorphins. Yeah, they get calm. And sometimes they get so flooded with it, they get really sleepy. I've seen horses lay down and pass out for 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, look, he licked his lips finally. That's huge, right? Because he, he finally went, oh, she's not going to just put that halter on me. She's waiting for my agreement. So when endorphins flood their system, it's like a sedative. And horses can get very sleepy. Um, I've seen them lay down for 20 minutes, pass out almost. Uh, with 20 people, 50 people in the audience, 20 people in the arena, and horses just lay down. And people are like, oh my gosh, why is that happening? It's like, because this little piece of him was never taken care of. He's a little sleepy. So see if you can just softly rub his head. Now take retreat, yes. And now rub again. Yeah. And yes, perfect timing. So he started go, I don't know, and she took no, it away and he went, Oh. Head towards his neck, rub his neck, and then put the halter on. You want to be smooth, clear, sure, but not sneaky or aggressive. And this is the biggest thing for people to learn is, um, yeah, when he has trouble, you just back off a little bit. Good. Oh, did he sniff the rope? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So I would let him explore it as long as he wants to. Don't get distracted by the other horse. Look at that. That's gold right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so rub on him, rub on him. You're still focused on your goal, but you're taking care of his needs. Yes. That's it. And now put the halter on. Real matter of fact, but you still got feeling, right? Lovely, lovely. Because if you're too careful, the horse, it feels suspicious, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to be like, yeah, another day at the office. But you still have some feeling when you're doing it. And you're noticing every reaction from the horse in case you need to back off. Lovely. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. He doesn't know me, so that's going to be you know, more challenging to him. you by the rail everything is hunky-dory and pretty soon he goes I want to be by the rail right and he'll stop doing that so help him understand the goal very good so you're checking in with you relax your arm relax your stick then use your stick then relax your stick really good Crystal <laughs> good job Nancy thank you yeah and and Robin I've got good students put in there put in there the horses know they're right when they have comfort, when there's no stimulus, right? So we've got to be quick to say, fix it, now, soft. Magic. 
She makes it look so easy. Better. Yeah. I'm just saying, don't cut in here. Don't cut in here. Boy, good boy, Shelby. That's it. Nose, 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 nose. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yes. That's really good, Crystal. So he's starting to understand now, right? Are you looking at him? No. I'm looking at the fence. Okay, you probably need to do the fence up here. That's it. <laughs> and then you can see him out the corner of the eye. That's super. Can you feel him now? Feel him confident, right? That's because her leadership is better, and he's clear now. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, why did he say that? I had to be by the fence. <laughs> oh, he's like, why is the stick moving? <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. He sees the goal. Nice. Now, send him to me and put his nose on my hand. Come here. Oh, talent, talent, <laughs> talent. <laughs> talent. <laughs> a new talent. He's done this a thousand times. Look at his nose, and you're going to send his nose into my hand. Be a good photo moment. <laughs> <laughs> you need to step further away. Nice. Aww. Good boy, Chevy. Aww, thank <laughs> you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well you know, done. You've got lots of horsemanship. Um, information that you can keep going with and also from from nancy but what you needed now was to feel what leadership feels like yes. right? and that's having a especially goal, i having think a it's plan. more left brain because yeah now it's kind of like well how are you yeah and even right brain horses they need that they do you know they need the leadership because they just go i'm in here with a predator oh my goodness and then you go no my goal is to show you that i'm not going to eat you now my goal is to you know develop a language with you now my goal is to do this and now we're going to do that and horses go you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look at him now, he's getting all sleepy, right? So look at him softly, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't want to go, <laughs> right? He's like, just kind of observe him out the corner of your eye. But can you see that? That's endorphins that are flooding his system, where now he's kind of going like, mm -hmm. it's literally like a drug. Can I have, mm -hmm. a, I have a question on this? Yeah. Because he used to go catatonic. Catatonic, catatonic. yeah. And it's hard to tell the difference. It is yeah. with him. Yeah, and he might he's, do that. He's on the brink right now, is my yeah. guess. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he so, goes in and out, and then, and then he'll like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. awake And again. it'll progressively get less and less, yes. right? As he gets more oh, yeah, confident. Oh, yeah, his behavior yeah. is 100% yeah. better. Yeah. So at the end of the session, if he's going to go there, I'll just leave him. But if he tries to go there during a session, I'll go, oh, there's no time for that. Let's do this, let's do that, and you keep him conscious. Because even then, he didn't go in very far. He was just like, oh, oh, and then yeah. he came out of it. So that was really good. He used to bring groan. Him, bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. Good. He used to groan, him, put his head him. between his legs, and Crystal said he used to bang he his head. head. Oh, my God. And remember that haltering, bridling, all those kind of things are a friendly game. So you make it friendly and feel nice and scratch them at the same time or, you know, whatever they love. That was really good. Nice. Back his tail. As soon as he turns to look at you, stop and back up. Less pressure. Just walk towards him. You're not chasing him. Right? That's it. Back up. Back up. Back up. Good. Every time that nose or the foot looks like it's coming to you, back up. Go to his tail. Or the right. The other one right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you troublemaker. Let's run. He says, you can't have my my friend. Now the other guy's going, oh, I'm going to rub on him. Okay? That's it. Now you can rub on him. Good. Here he comes. Good boy. Keep track. 
That's it. Just keep a nice flow in your body. Yeah, to his eye side. Right? If you go on the side where he has no eye, he's probably going to leave. So do everything from where he can see you. So I would put the halter on from his eye side. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the halter inside out and reverse it. So it'll do up on the right. So much more comfortable. Right, because you, yeah, you, you can see. You can see what's going on. Look at this one's getting jealous. To, I just have to really trust. Uh oh. Careful. Uh, uh, careful. Mm -hmm. Don't trust the dream. Uh, Don't trust it. He did it. Yay! Think about rubbing it. Don't think about holstering cool. So that's where if you think about these games categorically, it's like, oh, I'm just playing the friendly game. And I'm happy to put a halter on you. So sometimes we think about haltering and then there's that intensity that comes with it. I normally we tell people not to use their voice because they use their voice and no body language. Mm -hmm. But in this situation, you need to use your voice because he can't see you. So when you do the same thing on the right as the left and the left as the right, then he's going to feel more secure. Yep, keep rubbing, keep rubbing. When he stops, you stop. There. Usually what happens is we rub the horse and he goes, oh, I don't know, and we stop, and then he thinks he's right. But when they go, I don't know, you go, yeah, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Then when he stops, you go, see? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's the first time I've heard that. Usually it's... Uh, You have a goal and a plan, you'll be effective. But when you don't have a goal or a plan, it's energy is just spinning around. There's no direction, that you, and horses can't feel confident, let alone people. I'm going to back them up to the end of the road. So that was a little bit strong for too long. And the purpose of stepping forward is to find relief. So I don't keep pulling when he does that. Right? I keep from him and he responds to that question. He goes, oh, okay. So now when I want him to back up, I'm going to put a tiny wiggle in the room. Especially because he's a little bit challenged, right? And now if he doesn't do it, I'm going to go, you should be moving. As soon as he moves, I go soft. And then he doesn't move, I go soft. And then I go stop. 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 Right? And then that way he's going to learn to be light. See if he learns that from the forward yet. Not yet. <laughs> so the purpose is relief. The purpose is to soften. He can find relief from pressure. And then he starts to understand that more. So it's interesting that he turns this side to you, but I think what he's doing is hiding mm. on that oh. side. He goes, if I can't see you, I'm safe. Mm. He's actually afraid to look at you. Really? Head's low, adrenaline's coming down. Still not sure. You can see it by him, like, blowing.
the door and bring it back. How far? That far and bring it back. Good. And now come further. More. And back. Thank <laughs> you.